Is there a way we can grab the attention of the people we're trying to reach? That's what we'll talk about today. Remember something about attention. Yes, it's possible to buy, grab, or even steal it, but it's far better to earn it. Baratunde Thurston. Today we're going to talk about the book, You've Got Eight Seconds, Communication Secrets for a Distracted World by Paul Hellman. Part of the problem is, is that we communicate all the time and very rarely do people actually listen to what you're saying. This book is not so much about narrative of a story or how you go about a pattern. It is just chock full of ideas about grabbing people's attention. And so we're going to talk about some of those attention grabbing moments. He said that the premise of this book in general is that we need to grab people's attention that we have very short attention spans and we have to seize them if we're trying to get a message across to them. I mean, how many people go to seminars, listen to speeches, try to take a new course and learn something? And how often do we walk away from whatever it is we're doing and then not really pay attention to any of the things that we paid money to pay attention to? He said that a lot of times when we were in these meetings, we're thinking about everything uh, but. And I know I have a problem with attention span. I'm thinking about, hmm, what are we going to have for lunch? I wonder if I can get up and get a drink. Oh, I should pay attention. Hold on. Okay. Oh, you know what? My feet hurt. And I can go on all day like this, and my brain is just shifting. I say sometimes it's like a river inside my head where this idea is floating backwards and forwards. And sometimes I'm there and sometimes I'm not there at all. But he said that the three ways that are the most important, which we're going to talk about, is focus, variety, and presence. And he gives a quote from Winston Churchill. If you have an important point to make, don't be subtle or clever. Hit the point once, then come back and hit it again. Then hit it a third time. A tremendous whack. That two years into World War II, Winston Churchill got up, never give in, never give in, never, never, never. I don't know if that was the whole speech, but that's what Winston Churchill did. That was the main point. We don't give up. So make sure that when we say the thing that's the most important thing to say, we say it clearly. He says we should say less. I always thought about that too, that people actually only hear like, a third of what you say. Maybe it's even worse than that. And so if you say less words, they will walk away with more. I'm someone who can say a lot of words. As you can imagine, I have a podcast every week and I like to talk about things. And for me, having a 17 to minute, 20 minute, 23 minute podcast helps me focus. I could talk about an hour's worth about each one of these books I talk about. And I made this conscious effort to consolidate because it's in my nature to say more. And he says, in order to say less, details, he says, are like salt. If you add too much salt, it becomes terrible. And if you put too many details into things, you say 10,000 words that people didn't need to hear. They won't remember the thing that's important to them. He says, too, that we can tell people what we're going to tell them you know, giving an introduction, or we could tell people what you're not going to tell them. I always think about that too. A lot of times in these presentations, we talk about this. I am not talking about this. We're going to look at this in a whole other light. So tell people that you're going to walk away from something that it tends to be the standard idea. I'm not going to tell you about this overly complicated idea. Instead, I'm going to give you three lessons on being practical and solving this problem. It helps people when you either say what you're going to talk about, what you're not going to talk about. And then he says, when we actually define what we're talking about and not talking about, it'll help us slim everything down. He says sometimes people have an inner editor that just cuts way too much. And then you don't have enough speech to give or enough of a presentation to give to people. And he says in order to loosen up, just start typing about anything, start writing or talking, you know, if you're doing a podcast about anything. Well, you know, I was going to get some vegetables today and I really don't like vegetables, but I understand, you know, and you just start talking. And once you do this for a few minutes, you'll loosen up and then you'll be able to start actually getting out of the side of your own head and start talking about the thing that's important and ideas and 
conversation points will start to flow. And he says sometimes, too, we give too much inner detail. I know a lot of times I talk to you about problems I had when I was growing up or problems I'm having right now. And he says it's risky. I don't know. A friend of mine said, too, that she thought it was risky, that maybe I'm putting myself down all the time because I'm telling you the struggles I have. I guess I do that because I hope in some ways it represents struggles that you're having or that you can see that someone can come out of those struggles and come up with new solutions for them. He says that you can tell the difference between when you're sharing something. He talks about a pilot who gets on the aircraft and says, you know, I'm really scared of these big planes. I've had this terrible fear that I'm just, you know, and if a pilot is being too honest, now you want off the plane. Are you giving people good ideas about vulnerability, telling them why this matters to you or how you change? Or are you just scaring the crap out of everyone by giving too much information? So be cautious about how much information is too much information or so much information they want to jump, he says, off the plane. And when you're giving a presentation, you should answer the question of the people that they're having it. They want to know, why am I even here listening to you? You get that a lot. You know, I do presentations at conferences, and a lot of times people will wonder, well, why is it I should listen to you? Then the second question is, what are you even going to talk about? And then at the end, the question is, is what should I do now that I have this information you've told me? And so that framework of the three questions audience members often have are going to pilot how you're going to put your structure together of your presentation. So I always try to start off with, you know, a problem, where people were at, where I'm at, how we're trying to go about this issue and solving it. And if people don't understand the problem, they're not going to understand your solutions either. So I first lay out exactly what it is. What is the purpose of what we're going to talk about? And then people know, oh, we're going to talk about, and you see this in the podcast today, I was going to say, is there a way that we can grab people's attention? Now, you know, this podcast is going to be about grabbing attention. So that's the very first thing you're doing. Then the audience wants to know what in the world you're saying. And so it should be clear. It should be limited. It should come up with the main point. And it should be about the main focus of what you're talking about. I noticed a lot of times when I listen to podcasts, and I swear half the time I make this podcast because I get cranky with other podcasts, but someone will get off on this thing and they'll say, oh, well, I was having this problem with my car and I'm going to tell you the three solution points coming up with my car. But you know, I love my, and then they go off on this whole direction. You're like, how did we get here? How did we get to this point where you're talking about what color your car is? It has nothing to do with it. They think they're adding color to the presentation when instead they're just boring everyone to tears. I hope I'm not boring you to tears, but keep on the main message. And then the next part of it is, is that you want to focus on what the most important solution is. And he gives this topic of a boss who was trying to talk to his team about something that was going on. And he realized that he had nothing to offer them. He had no money for promotions. He had no advice to really give them about the problem that they were having. And this presentation was dire. There was no time to even give it. And so what he did is he was able to find a way to lay out exactly what was going on and just be honest with people and give them the scenario. So it's important, too, that you stick to the main points, even if you can't give someone what they're looking for. He says that the main message should be 10 words or less, that in general, the messages that companies, advertisers give us are all 10 words or less. So we want to say what it is we're dedicated towards doing. Again, I came up with small steps because I believe small steps are the solution to getting through some of the biggest problems we have. Are there times when big steps matter? Sure. But this is a small steps podcast, and so that's my focus. But he says that when you talk about all the different ways that people come up with slogans, we try harder, always low prices, always. And FedEx was, 
when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. But how many times have you walked away from watching advertising, particularly during like the Super Bowl and big sporting events? You can't even remember the company that advertised the thing because their advertising words were obscure. The main point wasn't the main point. And it was funny. And you're going to talk about that commercial the next day at work. But you don't remember what the call to action was. You don't remember what the company was. You don't remember who even paid for the ad. So he says that we should have a call to action, which is the third stage of it. What are the audience going to do with the message you're giving them? And he says that we should make the endings of our presentations, the call to action, impactful. Instead of saying something very philosophical, he gives us two examples. Ground rules are good. Okay, fine. That's very philosophical. Use ground rules. See, that second one is direct. It's effective. It tells people what they should be doing. And that's where it has power. So that's why I always also at the end have a call to action. Something that you should try in a small way to see if this potential solution works for you. And if that little solution worked for you, maybe the bigger idea works for you too. So that's going to be the close, is our call to action. So this is how we're going to try to grab people and get them to overcome the problems that they're having. And he says that if we're talking about your accomplishments or your story, that it should follow this acronym SOAR. Later in the book, he tells you not to use acronyms so much, but (laughs) the acronym is SITUATION. What is the situation that your story is going to give them that lays out why this is important to the topic? So if you do ramble off into a story, make sure it fits the situation. What was the obstacle that everyone was trying to overcome? Then the action. And then I saw it in a new light and I started thinking about things in a new way and I went this direction. And then the result, that's the R, is I solved my problem. I did this thing. And so that's how, if you're going to tell a story, make sure it's always in those four frameworks, situation, obstacle, action, and results. And that will help focus your story as compared to being this rambly story about your car color and something that doesn't matter, but instead follow something that's going to grab their attention. And then he says, watch what words you use. Make sure you're using decent words in your emails that won't get confusing. You're not using acronyms, jargon, that they're not less impactful words. You want to use strong words. You want to not break them up with the ums and you knows and the likes and the uh. You know, you want to make sure that every word you're using has a purpose. Someone gave me the thought a while ago when I was taking a writing class. What if I charged you a dollar for every word you wrote down or every word you said? And suddenly, That makes you think, how can I have more economy in the things I'm saying? This comes out, you might not know this, but my podcast, I record about 30 minutes worth of material for this podcast. And then I go through and I chop off about half of it. I come up with the best things I say, the more important things I say, because I do worry that we have so many podcasts that go on so long We don't have time anymore for it. So I wanted to keep it down and keep it to the most impactful things. Someone even suggested, maybe I put the full recording out on YouTube and then I leave the podcast for the shorter 15 minutes. But I try to sharpen these down to grab people's attention and not waste your time on things you're not that interested in. Again, this book goes on a long way. I think I'm only talking about half of where the book goes to. But he has a lot of ideas when it comes to grabbing people's attention and saying the things you want to say. You know, you want to grab their head, their heart, and their hands. You know, it's the same way of looking at it, like their head of how they think and their heart of what they're feeling and their hands about what they should do. The book goes on and on and gives you all sorts of different methods to try to grab people and tell a story and help people understand. We're not going to go through this whole book because we would go on forever. This is a good book to read if you're looking to tell a story, tell people something impactful, grab somebody's attention, whether you're talking to them one-on-one, you're talking to your boss during your performance review, 
or you're talking to a presentation and a group of people are sitting in the audience, just a bunch of ideas on how to help you get there. And the middle, he talks a little bit about how you can also use these techniques to make your emails better. And he says that every email should have a great subject line. The subject line should tell people exactly what it's about. I know sometimes that people will leave out subject lines in their email. It's the most important thing on the email. Because when I'm looking through my 3,000 emails I have in my inbox, you want to find the one that's about this topic. And then he says you want to manage your emotions. Don't put stuff in email that is so emotional that people will not know how to react to it in the right way. These last ideas were interesting too. Follow up. This is the most important thing. Do you know how often people don't follow up with emails or follow up with situations, particularly now for whatever reason, the world of follow up has fallen through. You know what? I had this guy and I said something to him about this new job. And he said, well, I'll follow up with you when you get at this new job. And then we can talk about this again. I'm like, okay. And I knew he wasn't going to. And you know what? About two weeks ago, he called me and said, hey, I'm just following up. You said to give you a call when you landed at your new job. Here I am. My gosh, this guy remembered like four months later. That was amazing to me. And now he's made an impression on me that he's the guy who follows up. And if you're out there listening, good job, man, that was awesome. And if the email is not going to be fast enough, if it's not going to get your true message out there, call people. I know calling people just makes them panic nowadays, but sometimes a phone call can cut through endless emails. So please consider calling someone and maybe you email them to ask them if you can call them quickly. People are busy, but sometimes you can knock out 20 emails just by calling someone and getting through it. And then if someone emails you, make sure you respond. So these are just few. Like I said, this is about half the book of ideas, of communication, how to grab people's attention and how to get them to listen to what you're trying to say. So my challenge to you is think of one communication session you have this week. Is it possible that you could grab their attention in a different way? Either by going after their head, their heart, their hands, or by answering the question, why should they listen? What are you saying? And what should they do with the information? And see if one of these ways of communicating can get through to someone that you've been trying to reach for a while. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast, tell a friend, and let them know that we're trying to build a community of problem solvers. And always, you can email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. The links are always in the show notes. So please let me know what you're thinking and if there's a way that I can help you. And remember, our path to communications in this world of distraction starts with small steps. <laughs>